everybody, welcome back to Taz's Wig Closet. This is Taz. Today we're going to take a look at a new style by Belle Tress. This one's called Caliente. It's in the color Butterbeer Blonde, and we're going to be doing a comparison with the editor's pick by Raquel Welch. Um, I've, had a, I've heard a couple of my viewers say that uh, this, this style is very much like that editor's pick, so we're going to check that out and take a closer look at this style. Caliente is a hot little number, don't you? It just fits perfectly into that uh, short to mid-length kind of a, a choppy, uh, shattered bob, wavy bob look. The Butterbeer Blonde is more of a very cool, very pale, cool, sandy blonde base color. You're going to see some other sandy tones in there, and I even pick up on some honey. And then all of that is on a light, a light brown root. Let's run down the specs for Caliente. So the bang area here, the front, it looks to be about seven inches. If I stretch it all the way out, I think it could probably reach to eight inches. Um, in the back then, we have about a 12 inch layer coming off of the crown. And we do have another five inch layer here on the nape. Now with, there's very limited layering on this style. You can see it's kind of a blunt edge here all the way around and it's pretty much the same length all the way around. It does feature a hand-tied temple to temple lace front and a left monofilament part. Let's go ahead and look at that lace front. The knots are very fine, I did observe that. Um, a bit densely threaded but finer knots. So let's run down this style. So it does feature that shattered spiral texture. Um, it seems to be very light and airy to the touch, and I think it's more bluntly cut than we have seen on other similar styles from Beltress, such as Columbia. Columbia is a little more heavily layered. It's very tapered at the ends. This one's a little bit more bluntly cut than that. Now you won't see the shattered texture really begin until you're about halfway down the style. So it's relatively flat and smooth and straight until you do get about halfway down and then it kind of sprouts out into uh, this wavy texture. There's a bit of a natural contour right out of the box coming off of that lace front and then they kind of, the sides here just kind of blend back in the style. Now what I was hoping for might be a little more permatease, but I knew not to expect that with Beltress. Beltress is very limited on the permatease. Um, really the permatease on their styles really just serves to cover the wefts, but it doesn't really give you any styling lift. But um, based on my experience and my love for this brand, I have always added my own lift to the styles. So I like a little more lift on top than what I typically see right out of the box. So what I'm going to do is probably take steam and add a little bit more lift at the front and maybe a little bit more on the side. So if I go like this and kind of pinch into the style and pull it up and fluff it, yeah, I'm going to get lots of volume. But I really don't expect it to stay just because there's a limited amount of permatease to really hold that long term. So Caliente does have quite a bit of hair here, um, but like the other Beltress styles, the fibers are very fine and light and airy to the touch, the feel, and the movement. Um, so it doesn't feel like it's a heavy wig. It doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel as heavy as it looks, put it that way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a full 360 so you can see the style from all angles. I'll go ahead and do a walk for you so you can get a sense of the scale and the movement and then we're going to bring out a editor's pick for a comparison.
I just love the way this moves, the way, the way that it feels when it's moving on my head. It just is so effortless um, of, of a movement. It appears to be very natural. Now this is the heat friendly fiber like the other uh, bell truss wigs in that cafe collection. All right, let's go ahead and grab Editor's Pick. I have Raquel Welch's Editor's Pick here in the color Shaded Biscuit. So this will be another nice comparison to make. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at these colors. I have had two pieces in the Butter Beer Blonde. Um, although I can see some variances here and there, I, I feel like the Butter Beer Blonde is going to be a lighter, brighter experience than the Shaded Biscuit, but both of them in the, along the same lines, really just a nice neutral blonde, neutral sandy blonde, leaning cool. And so that's the way I'm describing these two colors, but you're probably going to see more honey um, tones in the, uh, in the Shaded Biscuit some more of those uh, deeper sandy tones as well. So in combination with this root too, the root on the editor's pick is much darker than the root here on the uh, Butterbeer Blonde. So overall, I think you're gonna get a lighter, brighter tone with the Butterbeer Blonde compared to the Shaded Biscuit, but definitely interchangeable colors. So it's really easy to see the similarities, right? Um, a, a medium length, very tousled, shattered look, um, deconstructed curl. So let's point out some of the differences because this may just make the difference uh, in your decision of which one you might like for yourself. So the editor's pick is a four and a half inch bang. I find that the editor's picks, the front on the editor's pick is a little more manageable, although it's not terrible here on Caliente and I really plan on making even further improvements with the steam. Um, but we're talking a seven to eight inch front piece here as opposed to four and a half on editor's pick. And I always find that that's a little easier to wear, a little more practical for every day. The other difference is you're gonna see in the curl pattern. So this, this is a, like a tassel deconstructed, um, more of a rounder, softer look, I think then on the caliente which is more of a shattered spiral wavy spiral the other thing that you're going to notice is that um, you're probably going to get a li little bit more fullness on the editor's pick here's why your editor's pick has number one it has a lot more permatease in it than compared to the caliente number two it does have some side layering that doesn't appear on the Caliente. The last thing that's different then, you'll find a full mono top on Editor's Pick in, um, in combination with that lace front. And on Caliente then, you'll just find the left monofilament side part with the lace front. Now there is also a difference in price. I would say we're probably looking at between 90 and $100 difference in retail price. Um, the editor's pick being more expensive. I'll go ahead and slip on the editor's pick so I sh can show you the inside of the cap for Caliente. Be right back. So I'm wearing my editor's pick here, as you notice. Now what I can tell you is, uh, just kind of true to my comparison, we're gonna get a little bit more volume on editor's pick. And that volume is uh, going to stay rather than uh, just kind of temporarily fluffing the Caliente. And then, of course, that bang area is a little shorter. Um, I think that the cap is superior on the Raquel Welch as well. I feel like uh, with the Velcro adjusters, with the memory cap, with the more sturdy lace, uh, lace and monofilament features, you're getting a better cap with the Raquel Welch, but that's negligible. I mean, if I love the style and the cap is comfortable, I can live with... Um, some of those other things. And so here you go. Here is your lace front, temple to temple. It's a seamless unit then back into that left monofilament side part. It doesn't quite reach the crown. Got a little bit of permatease here on the sides. We do have a beautiful closed velvet ear tab, bra strap type adjusters. And you have to watch those sometimes, especially um, with the petite average circumference. I'm always cinching those in, and you have to be careful that they don't dangle out the bottom of the cap. Then we do have that extended velvet nape. Very, very comfortable. 
This style does seem to have a lot of stretch. For my petite average circumference, uh, the Beltrus Caliente fits me perfectly with a bit of adjustment. Um, that's the only circumference, circumference I can really speak to. It does have a lot of stretch. If you have questions about the sizing on this, go ahead and contact your manufacturer or retailer. In terms of styling for Caliente, there's really no styling needed. It's just perfect right out of the box. It looks like you spent a lot of time on this hair. Um, and in reality, it just took you a couple seconds to get ready. Um, I like it. I like it just the way it is right out of the box. I think it's very wearable. So with glasses, due to the limited amount of permatease here at the temple, these glasses really fit very easily between the ear and the ear tab on me, and that all depends on the thickness and placement of your glasses. And of course, styles like this, I always love to use a, one of my square bands. It's very easy and gentle on the wig fiber. And these little teeth and this hinge really keep it in place. So there's a couple different ways that you can wear it on Caliente. You can wear it basically just ornamental. Get a real pretty one and they come in so many different colors, but you can use it as a more of ornamental instead of functional. It's very cute. or you can use it to pull the hair back away from the face. And expose that lace front. Real pretty. I always like to pull out a couple pieces here and there. It just makes it look a little more natural. And then from there, you can always put the hair back into a ponytail or a bun. In this case, I'll go ahead and just do a cute little ponytail using a medium sized claw clip. I can also use one of those pressure barrettes. Pretty little jewel tones there. See you later, everybody. This has been a review of the brand new Caliente for 2019 by Beltrus and their cafe collection in the color Butterbeer Blonde. See you next time on Taz's Wig Closet.